same guy we saw on our first day here? <laughs> Everyone's gone crazy. Everyone should get out of here. Well, they'll never wake up. But I was right, my precious. <laughs> you are invincible. <laughs> precious? What's his precious? A miracle machine. Definitely not impossible. I think he's referring to that machine. What a drunkard. Hmm. Oh, goodness. The smell of alcohol. Main Fräulein, please allow me to fan the fumes away with my wings. Oh, excellent. Please fan them away for me, too. Certainly. I've checked the surroundings, but there's no one else here. Isn't that strange? The Fatui is a big organization, but he's the only one left at this camp. What's more, we didn't even see him the last time we were here. Even the larger gentleman from the first time is missing. I think they must be hiding somewhere. As for why they may be hiding, I'm afraid we'll have to ask him. But he's as drunk as Tone Deaf Bard! Oh, should we wait for him to sober up? Cleanse him with the Holy Spring of Punishment. Mean Fräulein means to splash him with water. Ooh, sounds like a good idea! Let's... Hey, he opened his eyes! Uh, huh? Hey, are you one of the Fatui? Can you tell us what happened here and what that machine is for? <laughs> Fatu... Ha! Ah! Fatui! Oh, those blockheads from the administration will regret it now. <laughs> That's what you get for rejecting my research and forcing me to... Forcing me to... To conduct my research on this deserted island. <laughs> my precious. My precious. <laughs> Looks like he has a lot of pent-up emotions. You mocked me! And my precious invention! You... You don't know anything about the future! Only my invention can help us conquer the world! <laughs> idiots! Such idiots! <laughs> Ow! Don't hit me! I won't blow up the lab again. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. This man's gone insane. There's no way we can communicate with him. He wasn't like this when we first met him. It looks like the effects have grown worse, to the point of driving him mad. <laughs> My manuscript. My manuscript. Only that can, can save. <laughs> manuscript? Where is it? Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me! <laughs> Fischl, don't yell at him! Hmm. Then I'll... <sighs> Let me try. A uh, kind sir, look at me. Now tell me, where did you hide your manuscript? <laughs> no! No, don't force me to write a report! <laughs> Go away! Uh. He's completely lost in his own imagination. Allow me. Hmm. Please excuse me. <laughs> oh! My butt! <sighs> my brain is finally starting to work again. It's, it's not a mushy mess anymore. Can you tell me where you put the manuscript? The manuscript. The manuscript is in the crack over there. Oh, finally. Otherwise, I was going to have to blast some of my loudest rock and roll in his ears. Kazuha hesitated for a long time before making a move. He's so nice. Everyone, let's search the stone cracks nearby for the manuscript.
Congratulations! We found the key to solving the problem. Let me see. Just as I thought. This machinery, named cognitive mimicry, is capable of altering the state of people's brains. It was invented by the researcher we met earlier. His name is Persikov. According to the manuscript, the Fatui officials did not support Persikov's research. They believed he had taken the wrong path. But Persikov insisted on putting his machine to use. In order to achieve that, he disassembled the machine and used his connections to transport the parts to this deserted island. How did they find this island? <sighs> the Fatui's intelligence network is not to be underestimated. Persikov was dead set on carrying out his experiments on this island. Most of his subjects were junior Fatui soldiers who all signed a waiver beforehand. It looks like they really thought this machine would benefit the Fatui. How does the machine work? That's most likely top secret. The manuscript didn't reveal any details, but Persikov did mention that the machine was modeled after the power of a god. Does that mean... There's a god connected to these dreamlike mirages, and the Fatui found a way to research it? Clearly. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to reproduce the god's power. Anyway, Persikov's experiment did not go as planned. The machine broke down just days after it was activated. They tried to fix it, but... The technologically illiterate Fatui soldiers completely ruined the machine. Even its most important component of all, the crystalline cores, got ejected and disappeared. A testament to the importance of maintenance in all aspects of life. I believe we can all learn something from this. Persikov may be a mad scientist, but he didn't want to see his subordinates suffer. Besides, if he didn't solve the problem, he would end up going insane as well. As a last resort, Persikov went out on his own to look for the cores. But he was just a sickly researcher, unfit for the task. He had to give up. Then, Persikov went searching for the soldiers who had gone mad and strayed from the group, and took them to a hidden cave. I think that was where they were at the day we arrived on this island. Persikov was taking a strong Fatui soldier somewhere. Yes. It took Persikov all of his strength to get all the missing soldiers into the cave. He tried to snap them out of it with music and poetry, but nothing worked. We came here once, but there was no one around. Come to think of it, that must have been the day Persikov was busy gathering the soldiers into the cave. There's good news and bad news written on the last few pages. The good news is, Persikov managed to figure out the location of the crystalline cores by piecing together the snippets of information he could get from the delirious soldiers. The bad news is, Persikov failed to revive them and eventually succumbed to the device's influence himself. The last few pages of the manuscript are just unintelligible drunken scribbles. Ah, <sighs> it appears that the responsibility for this issue now falls to my retainers and I. There's a map in the manuscript. The marking should indicate the locations of the crystalline cores. We've got no choice but to find the crystalline cores now!
done enough procrastinating. Let's go.
We've inserted all the crystalline cores, Mona. Is that all we needed to do? I think so. That's what the manuscript says, anyway. Let's give it some time. Hopefully it'll return to normal. to me and my retainers at once. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I'm out of here. Hey, hey! Don't leave me here on my own. Mr. Persikoff's still there. We need to save him. <laughs> Those two definitely seem a little more lucid now. It looks like we succeeded. Yay! Let's get out of here, then. I now want to spend the rest of this vacation back at our own camp. Yeah, but it feels like camp now. Kind of like our temporary home. <laughs> then perhaps we should call it the Embassy of the Imanakreish and Dodo Land. Huh? No! That's too many words! Paimon would prefer something easy to remember. Come on, let's go home now. to thy liking. Hyman's loving it. Wonderful. Main Fräulein invited you all here not only to witness the arrival of our Holy Land, but most importantly, she wished that you could all relax and enjoy the summer. Great. Well, I've come to the right place. May this place become an eternal paradise. Main Fräulein says she hopes to go on more adventures with you here in the future. Of course! And you should come find me and Leela when you get the time. I'll show you around. Oh, also, my friend runs the best restaurant in Leela. I'm sure you'll love it. If you're into opera, you should go see Yunjin. She's the nicest person, and she likes making friends with new and interesting people. I'm sure the two of you will have plenty to talk about with your shared passion for theatrics. Oh? If Lady Shinyan speaks so highly of it, then I must entertain the idea. Traveler, I have a suggestion. There's a snack called Roasted Lavender Melon in Inazuma, which goes rather well with fish. Why don't we roast some fruit and seafood for dinner tonight? Oh, did you try it in Inazuma? <laughs> That's great. You know, I want to follow your example and travel around the world. Hopefully, I can also make good friends along the way. That means a lot coming from you. Ah, you're all here. I've noticed an issue. Although we fixed the machine, as you can see, the mirages on the islands have still not disappeared. Hmm, I've noticed that too. But considering it took some time for the mirages to appear, it may also take some time for them to disappear. Yes, that's definitely possible. In other news, my scryglass seems to be working fine now. The divination results are also looking about right. Although... Although there are some parts in the results that I don't quite understand. It's as if there is some sort of power surrounding us. 
And it's still watching us. Do you think it's caused by the machine? Or perhaps Persikov? Sorry, I'm also not sure. All I know is that the power is not hostile at the moment. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem to harbor any ill will toward us. Well, although there's nothing left to disturb us and we can finally kick back and enjoy our vacation, we still ought to be cautious while we're on these islands. I will keep seeing what the stars say every day. I promised Fischl that I'd be her guard. I can- Good. I'll be counting on you. Goodness knows why those girls are so carefree about everything. I suppose it falls to me to be extra vigilant. Right? Well, hello there, strangers. <laughs> you finally called. I thought you were having so much fun that you'd completely forgotten about me. Nope. Oh, tone deaf bard, a whole bunch of really strange things happened. A strange machine that can imitate the power of a god? Wow! <laughs> I didn't know the Fatui had plans like that. Their imaginations are truly running wild. So, judging from your tone, it sounds like you don't know any more about this than we do. Alas, I am but a humble bard who sings for his mora in the tavern. Why would I know anything about it? Ugh, so annoying! <laughs> but other than that, did you two have fun? We did! We ate a lot of yummy food and saw loads of amazing things! It was really cool! <laughs> That's good. The point of traveling is to record any feelings stirred along the way. As long as you had an unforgettable experience, this journey has served its purpose. As for the mysterious voice, although we don't know who it was, not only did she not harm you, she also helped you to gain a better understanding of each other, right? If you look at it that way, maybe she meant you well. I mean, if she was able to intercept Alice's communication tool, I'm sure she's also plenty capable of attacking you. Hmm... Tone Deaf Bard is right! <laughs> I'm glad to bring you some peace of mind. Just enjoy your vacation to the fullest, and don't forget to tell me all about the marvelous mirages when you get back. I want to record all these beautiful memories and turn them into ballads. Every summer will become an unforgettable song. Then I'll just wait for your return. Happy vacationing! Hmm, if Tom Deaf Bart thinks it's okay, then maybe there's nothing to worry about. After all, Tom Deaf Bart is still a god. We should probably trust him. Let's head back. We don't want to keep everyone waiting. Hold on. Did official say earlier that she's going to catch some crabs? Oh, Paimon wants to go too! Now you have solved the mystery. Doesn't it make you feel happy? Satisfied? Don't worry, I won't hurt you. I'm just a little bird that sometimes flies by these islands and am now watching you from far, far away. I just so happened to sense a power here that has something to do with me. I was curious, so I landed on the beach to quietly watch everything that took place on these islands. It was fascinating. The ones who came here to work were so busy and yet I still saw genuine smiles on their faces from time to time. And then all of you arrived later on, bringing your glorious dreamscapes and wonderful willpower. Your dreams are like the pure and delicate bubbles floating on the water. The more beautiful the illusion, the more it fascinates me. I'm not able to travel myself, but I do admire free spirits like yourself. So, I helped them design a little something for you all. I hope you liked it. As I said, I don't have an agenda. I'm just a little bird. 
I stopped here to admire your lives, joys, sorrows, and all. You are a special person with a unique and brilliant glow. I decided to communicate with you in this way because I'm really curious about you. There's no need to wonder about my name. Maybe one day in the future, we will meet in another place. When that time comes, I think you'll be able to recognize me. <laughs> Thank you. 